My name is Martin O'Malley. I am the former governor of Maryland, uh, former mayor of Baltimore. All right, Maryland. And I'm running for president, and I need your help. I believe that the genius of our country, in a nutshell, is this. That in every generation, we find ways to take actions that actually allow and empower more of our people to participate more fully in the economic, the social, and the political life of our nation. That is not only the genius of our society and of our character, it is also what made us the land of opportunity through 240 years of the practice of the sort of economics that allow us to actually grow our middle class, expand opportunity, and increase prosperity in every generation. Call it the American dream, if you will. Call it progress. I believe that progress is a choice. And over the last 30 to 40 years, we've been making mostly different choices. And they are not in keeping with that formula for progress. So as mayor and as governor, I instead adopted policies that allowed more of our people to more fully participate. And we created a better economic model because of it. Uh, during uh, my time as governor, uh, we not only became the first state to pass a living wage, we also passed the minimum wage and raised it to 10 10 It's been to 1280 in a couple of counties like Montgomery and Prince George's. And I, believe, and I believe that as a nation, we should be raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour whenever and wherever we There are many other things that we need to do as well to rebuild the American dream. And rather than uh, giving me a speech about it, we will talk about it. But if, uh, one of the most jarring things that's happened in our country, and I ask this question everywhere, Jose. Show of hands, how many of you believe very firmly you've enjoyed a better quality of life than your parents and grandparents? Raise your hand. How many of you believe just as firmly that your children and your grandchildren will enjoy a better quality of life than you have? Raise your hand. I'll tell you what, this is a more optimistic group than most. <laughs> I asked that question in uh, Polk County in Des Moines, Iowa, 350 people, Democrats, only five people raised their hand to that second question. Because this is the first decade, this side of World War II, that wages for 75% of us have either been flatlining or going down. And if we want wages to go up, then yes, we have to do things like the wage, putting wage policies in the center of our considerations. We have to return to our true selves. We have to remember that our economy is not money. Our economy is people. Right. It's all so, uh, so look, in, in conclusion here, uh, when I was governor, uh, we also extended prevailing wage. We made it easier for people to bargain collectively and join Woo! unions. We did more, not less, to improve public education and to make college more affordable for more people. Going four years in a row with that appendix increase in college tuition. And uh, along the way, uh, we also found ways to do more to invest in our infrastructure, our broadband, to connect all of us, and uh, to, the, to restore the health of the Chesapeake Bay. And we also did a few other things as well. We passed the DREAM Act for all of the kids in Maryland. We passed marriage equality and defended it at the ballot box for the first state to do that. And so these are these are the things that free people chooses to do. Not just words, but action. There are many of us running in the Democratic Party for president who espouse progressive goals and progressive values. But I am the only candidate in this race with 15 years of executive experience in some of the toughest places and through the toughest times, actually taking those progressive goals and values and putting them into action to achieve better results for our citizens. And that's what we need to do as a country. New leadership to get things done and to choose progress again. Thanks. I really want to get to this for, um, Thanks to Twitter, I really kind of want to get to this right away. The morning um, that you announced that you were running for president, 
uh, mostly black Baltimoreans heckled you, right, during that announcement. And they started talking about your record, the fact that there have been more than 100,000 arrests in 2005, you know, and the ACLU actually sued and there was a settlement with the city. What do you say to people? There was a quote that I read in an article that said, O'Malley, quote, is the father of mass incarceration in Baltimore City, and there was no great economic upswing for minorities during the time. So what do you say, you know, we cannot talk about immigrant rights and LGBT rights and not talk about Black Lives Matter. So, we don't talk about that. So, we weren't here to make a great speech about this last night. But back to the point, no more talk, actions. So, from a legislative perspective, from an action perspective, how are us president, how would you look forth and support legislation that really proves to black people, and not black people, that black lives matter? Yeah, let me unpack many of the things that uh, were contained in, in your opening questions and statements. One of which is patently untrue. Uh, on the day of my announcement, we had a great crowd on Federal Hill. And it was probably the most diverse crowd that any presidential candidate of his or her announcement has had. Uh, I, was, I was the mayor of Baltimore for seven years. And uh, far from being heckled on that day, we had a great crowd. And in fact, one of the people that, that began that program uh, was Mr. Robert Nolan in Penn Lucy. Yeah, I saw that. Yes. So, uh, no, but sir, but there were people that were definitely, you know, organized. Yeah, there were like three or four. Oh. From my standpoint, I think most of them were white. Okay. But if you saw some, if you saw more that day, I, I saw videos. Okay. Yeah. But outside of that, let's talk about. about yes, yes, exactly. Yes. Because look, everybody, there are very few issues in our country that are quite as painfully intertwined as the legacy of violence, race, and law enforcement in America. On Monday, that was the July 13th. It was the two-year anniversary of the Black Lives Matter creation of Black Lives Matter hashtag, right? Political project. That has moved right from an online political project to an on-the-ground social justice initiative that has reignited the fight for racial justice across the globe, right? And black struggles across the globe. It was also the one-year uh, anniversary marking the death of, excuse me, Eric Garner. And also, Sandra Bland died in police custody in Texas. So right now, here today, we want to take a moment at Netroots to acknowledge the lives lost every 28 hours, but specifically the black women's lives that are lost every 28 hours. Okay, black women and our child. Because we think it's important and we demand, just as I demanded from that several times, and then decided to go ahead and create, right, a local focused, black focused space to connect local black community organizers with organizers who are here from around the country for net roots, right? Because that's something that we had to do, right? But we should not have had to do, right? Black roots. Hashtag black roots, okay? Because when they announced they wanted to come to Arizona and talk about immigration, I wonder, are you going to talk about the 25% the of black immigrants in Arizona who are here as asylees and refugees because of US foreign policy? Are you going to talk about, when you go on your border tour, are you going to talk about the individuals that come from Cameroon and Somalia and Jamaica and Central America? Are you going to talk about the Garifuna? Are you going to talk about the afro Latinos? Are you going to talk about the afro Mexicans that are being caught at the border? But I knew that you would not. Right? I wanted to know, are you going to talk about Arizona and our state legislators, 75% of whom are members of ALEC? 
who introduced legislation into the Arizona State Legislature unedited. The state that passed SB 1070, the state that passed SB 1062, twice. The state that passed SB 1445, the Senate bill that would have kept secret the names of police officers that commit deadly use of force and redacted their names from their disciplinary records that we have to come together as a black and brown community to tell governor that we need to be tough. Welcome to Arizona. Welcome to Arizona where Monica Jones, the black trans woman, cannot walk down the street. Today, today cannot walk down the street. Okay? Welcome to Arizona, where the Martin Luther King holiday was repealed by a Republican governor. And we have to take initiative to put a ballot referendum, right, to entrench that you will honor the legacy of black people. If we're going to call this a progressive space, we must always and unapologetically and unequivocally center black leadership that has made every single day of progress in this country. So we are going to hold this case. We are going to acknowledge the names of black women that have died in police custody. And then, Governor, now we do have questions for you about what your are going to do to make sure that black lives do matter. And then, as the leader of this nation, will you advance a racial justice agenda that will dismantle, not reform, okay? Not make progress, but that will begin to dismantle structural racism in the United States. Back to the point, not generality. 
guys, guys, specifically I believe every police department in America should have to report in an open and transparent and timely way all police involved shootings, all discourtesy complaints, and all brutality complaints. should have civilian review boards. We implemented one and it works, but they have to be staffed and it's not enough just to have a board. You have to give them the money to hire their own detectives so they can invest in the Will you do that? Yes. Look, I, 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 we'll yes. I'm going to be rolling out a criminal justice reform package as a candidate for president. And as I do so, I want everyone in this room to ask all of the other candidates the same. for their responsibility. Some of the most important things that we accomplish in life, you know, requires persistence. We did not repeal the death penalty in Maryland the first time we tried or the second time. We repealed it the third time we tried. Every life matters. And that is why this issue is so important. Black lives matter, white lives matter, all lives matter. Black lives matter, white lives matter, all lives matter. So, wait, wait a second. is waiting out there. Um, we have to get to ask Senator Sanders the exact same questions. So let's get going. Um, thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Thank you all very much.